it is such a joy to be able to celebrate today together. To come together and to celebrate Jesus. Because he is the reason for this season that we are in. I don't know about you, but I love Christmas. I love the feeling in the air. I love walking around this beautiful city that is way too warm right now. It should be snowing. It's a beautiful thing to go in the hustle and bustle of the streets, to find the Christmas markets that are full of all the cagotillos and all that. If you don't know what that is, welcome to Barcelona. If you do know what that is, you probably have four of them. But it's fun to be able to go to the markets and to eat the food and hear the music playing in the air. And I love all of it. I love the chaos of this season. That when you go around, there's just a sense of urgency and expectancy in the air. I love when I see children that have that flicker of mystery in their eyes. That as they walk around, they're full of joy and expectancy of what will be. And it's always a joyous occasion, is it not? Sometimes crazy, but joyous. We went down to the Corte Inglés yesterday to get our annual picture with Santa. And it was fun to be there with every other child in Barcelona. They were all there. And it was fun to see as parents interacted with children and children with parents and parents with grandparents. It was fun to see the connection between friends that were sitting over coffee or hot chocolate, more hot chocolate this year than anything else. It was fun to see as people would talk and laugh and dream. It was fun to see as we stood in line and my kids were standing there and they would have all the other kids filling out letters to give to Santa and my kids filled it out and they're like, we're gonna give this to Santa. And they would turn to me and wink. They sneakily showed me the paper before they turned it in. Like, just in case you want to know. I love being able to go and have meals and coffees with friends. And look, I want to encourage you. Over the course of the next couple of weeks, through this holiday season and Christmas and New Year's, please spend time with the people that you love. Spend time with those that God has put in your path, with your family, with your friends with your community, I wanna encourage you with people from this community of faith, spend time together. Don't let the moments just pass by. As Brandy was saying earlier, sink deeply into the moments now. I want you to sink deeply into this season and enjoy the time that you have together. It's beautiful and it's a gift. I was talking with someone at the beginning of the gathering who have a four month old little girl. She's cute. I was like, oh, she's beautiful. And I thought, oh, no. My kids, who are now nine and five and almost a year and a half, used to be that size, and they no longer are. Time passes. But we have a beautiful gift of spending those moments. So look deeply into the eyes of the ones that you love. Embrace the moments. Drink hot chocolate. Cafe con leche starts after the season again. Right now it's hot chocolate. And spend those moments enjoying and embracing the gift that this season is. But this morning, before we continue on, and before we get together in those environments and sending cookies to our neighbors, and I trust that you are, it's the right thing to do. We want to pause and we want to remember what this season is really all about. That this season of Christmas is all about Christ. It's all about remembering who he is and what he's done and what he continues to do in the hearts and lives and the souls of those who would put their confidence and their trust in Jesus. From the very beginning of time, we see a story that is about a God, a father who loves his children. From the very beginning of time, we see God who steps into this story and he creates out of nothing what we see and what we know. And it says he creates light and he says that's good. And he creates the earth around us and he says that's good. And he creates all the animals and things that we can enjoy and he says that's good, but something is missing. And he says, ah. And he says he creates man and woman in his image and likeness, and he steps back and he goes, whoa, that is very good. He was talking about the women. The men were functional, you know, <laughs> carry heavy things. He says, that's very good. And he says that God had this relationship with mankind, and he would go, and he would walk with them in the garden, in paradise, in the cool of the evening. I love that phrase, the cool of the evening, because I love to walk in Barcelona in the cool of the evening. When you walk around and you can just see everything as the sun setting, it's beautiful. You breathe it in, you breathe it out, and you get some churros and chocolate. He says he would walk with them in the cool of the evening. 
Did he have churros? Let's say yes. And he would walk with them and he would talk with them, but, but then something happened, okay? Something happened that changed the course of history and sin enters the world. Because of the disobedience of Adam and Eve, sin enters the world and there is a rift between God and man. There's a separation that happens that for centuries, humanity is desperately trying to do whatever they can to sacrifice and to offer something to God to create this sense of reparation. And God is pushing in, trying to recreate what was before and trying to reconnect with humanity. But there's this gap, there's this rip, there's this separation. And so the Bible tells us in the book of Romans at just the right time, God, because of his great love, sends his son to step into human history. It says in John chapter 3 that God loved the world so much that he sent his only son to be the sacrifice to once and for all offer forgiveness of sin and to bring restoration and reparation and reconnection with God the Father. That this God who loves you and me so much would not allow this story to continue without having a way to come back into right relationship with him. And it says that Jesus comes, not in the way that we would expect. How many times... Have you or I been living our lives and Jesus shows up, but not like we expect, right? We have our ideas and our plans of how it will be, and it so often doesn't turn out that way. And I want to encourage you that if you're expecting or asking Jesus to show up in your life, he will, but invite him to show up in the way that he needs to, maybe not in the way that you want him to. It says that Jesus comes not in the way that you and I would expect, because I would want a conquering hero. Boom, here I am. Follow me, I know the way out. But instead it says he comes in the form of a baby, wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. And it says something profound happens as all the heavens cry out, joy has come, peace has come, hope has come into the world. It says that Jesus lives his life, lives a righteous life, showing people what it means to live in connection with the Father. And it says that he comes to the point where he gives his life on a cross for you and me so that our sins could be forgiven, so that our restoration could happen with the Father, so that we would have hope. And I don't know about you, but I need hope today. So that we would have peace. I think we would all be honest with one another. We need peace in this world. We need peace in our lives. We need peace in our daily situations. And he says he gives us peace like we can't even understand. He steps in so that we will have joy. Not a false image of joy that we try and fill with other things, but true joy that fills from the soul level and overflows out of the core of who we are. He said, I came that you would have a life and life to the fullest. And if you don't know him this morning, he invites us to know him like this. But here's the reality. Even if you do know him, we know that that doesn't always mean that life is easier. Following Jesus and stepping in and embracing this gift that he offers us doesn't always mean that life is easy and light. Sometimes it is hard and complicated. But I love, I love, I love the intention that Jesus puts into this, that God puts into this story. That from the moment before he ever is even born, the angels say, he will come as a free gift to all mankind for all time. And his name, watch this, will be called Emmanuel. Emmanuel, which means the God that is with us. And so from the very first moment until now, his heart has been, I want you to know that I'm the God that's with you. That no matter what you're walking through, no matter what you encounter, no matter what you find along the way, I will be with you. Does that make it easy? Not necessarily, but he's with us. And he gives us safe passage through the hardest moments in life, giving us peace. And he's there with us. In the most beautiful of moments where we sense his smile on our situation, we go, God, I know you are here. He says, no matter what you're walking through, no matter where you are, no matter what you're experiencing, I will be with you. And that's the same promise he offers to us today. The same gift that he has always offered, he offers to you and I today. He says, I'll be with you. And if you're looking for peace, I will give you peace. And if you're lacking joy, I'll give you joy, real joy. And if you're lacking hope, I will step into your story at just the right time. And I will give you hope. And I'll help you live a life that has meaning and purpose. And maybe you're here this morning and you've experienced that. I want you to remember right now those moments that he has been there. 
Maybe you're here right now and you've known those moments, but you desperately need him to show up once again. I want you right now to invite him to speak to you and to be what you need in that moment. Or maybe you're here today and you go, John, I've never taken a step to really trust Christ. I've never taken that step to invite him into my life. And I want you to know that this is not something that is magical. It's, it's, a, it's a step of trust. That as we put our confidence in him, the same gift that he has offered for all the time, he offers right now. That he will allow you to walk a life in connection and in tandem with him that is beautiful and good. Is it always easy? No, but he said, I'll be with you. And from the moment he stepped into human history and those that put their faith in him did, he changed the trajectory of their lives. And he did beautiful things through them. And in this moment, if we allow him, the same Christ who came at just the right time wants to step into your story and mine right now at the right time and invite us into something that is beautiful and life-giving and true and full of peace and hope and joy. I don't know about you, but I want to live that life. And we're going to celebrate in just a moment in communion. Celebrate what Christ has done and remember what he's done because scriptures say that we're to remember him. Okay? And we're going to do that. But before we do, we always want to pause and make space to ask this question. Maybe up until this moment in your life, you've just been getting through life and going through the motions. But maybe right now, at just the right time, your life will collide with hope and peace and joy. So I want to ask you to do this. I want everyone in this room to close your eyes and to bow your heads. No one's looking around except for me. But if you're here this morning, before we continue on, we want to ask this. If you're here this morning, and you'll say, John, you know what? I've never asked Jesus into my heart. I'm not a follower of Christ. I've never asked him to come into my life, to forgive me of sin and of the past, to give me hope and peace, joy, and a life that's worth living. But maybe you're here this morning. And at this Christmas season, you would be honest enough to say that something is lacking in your heart and in your soul. And maybe this morning you would say, John, I want to take that step to know Jesus. Look, I promise you, friend, it does not mean you have all the answers. It means you're beginning a journey today that will change your life forever. It's beginning a journey of faith, of saying, God, I take a step towards you. Jesus, I take a step towards you. Now reveal yourself to me. You'll have questions. That's normal. We want to walk with you. But if you're here today and you say, John, I want that hope. I need hope. John, I want that peace. I need peace. I want that joy and that life worth living. I want to pray with you. Or maybe you're here today and you would say, John, you know what? I used to be a follower of Jesus. I used to put my trust in him. Maybe some people think you still do. But maybe it's been a really long time since you actually followed and trusted him. Maybe you're here this morning and you would say, I could really use a fresh start. If that's you, I want to pray with you. Look, I'm not going to embarrass you. I'm not going to call you out. I want to believe with you. Because I remember the moment I made this decision in my life. And I remember my friends who made this decision. And I know this is the most important decision you will ever make in your life. And so with every head bowed, every eye closed, no one looking but you and me. If you're here this morning and you say, John, I want to ask Jesus into my heart and begin that journey. Or John, I need a fresh start today, right where you are. Would you just put your hand up and right back down so I can pray with you? Yeah, I see you. Yes. Yeah, I see you. I need a fresh start today. I need Christ in my heart. I need a fresh start. If that's you, just throw your hand up and right back down. I need a fresh start. Anyone else? Yeah, I see you. I need a fresh start. Yeah. Javel. Yeah, I see you. Yeah. Okay. Look, let's do this. To support our friends that raised their hands, let's pray this prayer together. Lord Jesus, I need you. Forgive me of my sins. Forgive me of the past. Come into my heart. I accept you as the Son of God. Give me a fresh start. Give me hope and a bright future. Life 
hear and eternal. The Bible says if you ask him to come in, that he does, that he gives you this free gift. It says that he gives you a fresh start, that the old has gone and the new has come. You're a new creation in Christ Jesus. So if you raised your hand, if you prayed that today, congratulations. Welcome home. At the end of our gathering, Nick is our discipleship pastor. Hey, Nick. Nick will be over here in the front. He'd love to meet you. He'd love to shake your hand, give you a hug, give you a Bible, pray with you and help you on this journey that you've begun. But please, don't walk alone. We're not meant to do life alone. We're meant to do life in community. So press in. And if you do, we want to walk with you. We're going to continue this morning and celebrate in communion with one another. Communion is a symbolic act that represents what Jesus Christ did on the cross. The bread represents his body and the juice, the shedding of his blood. Scriptures tell us that as we do this, we do this in remembrance of him. To remember what he has done as he offered once and for all that hope through that selfless act. So this morning we're going to pass it out. Grab a piece of bread. Grab a juice. I want to ask if you would to hang on to it until everyone's been served. And then once everyone has received that, we'll celebrate together. As we look to scripture, in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, the scripture tells us that on the night in which Jesus was betrayed, he took bread and he took wine and when he had blessed it, given thanks, he said, do this in remembrance of me. But it also says that we are to examine our own hearts and to reflect in remembrance. So I, I want to do two things. In this next couple of moments, while we're praying and while we're passing out the elements and reflecting, in a posture of prayer, in a posture of surrender, I want to do two things. One, search your heart. Ask God to search your heart. If there's anything that stands between where you are and where he's called you to be, this is the perfect moment to surrender it to him. And then I want you to remember. Remember who he is what he's done, and the moments in your life that he has shown up and been there for you. Let's take a moment in prayer, and I'll come back, and we'll celebrate in communion together.